Good evening. I'm John Brunt, pastor at the Edmonds Adventist Church, and it's time for our nightly church family update, where we keep up with each other spiritually and emotionally, even though we can't be together physically. Each night we'll have some prayer requests, we will look at a scripture, and we'll have prayer together. If you want to give a prayer request, please email me. The email address is Pastor John, one word, at Edmonds Adventist. Again, one word, Pastor John at Edmonds Adventist dot org. Tonight, I'm not going to go over all of the requests that we read last night. Tomorrow night, I'll do that again. But tonight, I thought I would just mention those that have been updated today. We, I've gotten several updates, at least five of those that we prayed for last night where I've gotten updates today. And so I thought I would mention those. First of all, we've been praying for Miranda, the student missionary from Walla Walla, who has been holed up in France, trying to get home for quite some time now. It looks as if it's certain she's got a place on the plane. She'll be coming home tomorrow. She'll be going through Washington, D.C. overnight there, and then on to her home in Idaho. So that's great news, and let's pray that that will all go well tomorrow. We've been praying for a little one-year-old boy, Huxley. He was in the ER uh, yesterday. He is home from the hospital now, but he needs our prayers. He was a premature baby, and he's dealing with a respiratory ailment that sometimes hits babies who were born premature, and they... Uh, are still concerned about him. So please pray for him. We've been praying for Angela McGee's mother, Sharon. She has decided to go on hospice. That, of course, has to be very distressing news for the family. But we pray that you will be with her, that you will give her peace, that during this difficult time, all of the family will feel God's comfort and God's presence. So that's Angela McGee's mother, Sharon, going on to hospice. Some good news today, an update from Bill Davenport. You know, he started that treatment on his eyes. Uh, they did some laser things and procedures. They told him he might have a lot of pain afterwards. Well, the procedures seem to have gone well. And he isn't having any pain at all, he says. He now has a couple of weeks before he goes in again for some shots and uh, continued treatment. So we're glad for the good news. We praise God for that and pray that as these treatments continue, everything will continue to go well. And then we prayed for Noni's mother, who had a diagnosis of the COVID 19 at the same time as a diagnosis for cancer. Tomorrow she will get the results of her latest uh, coronavirus test. If she's now negative, they'll be during, doing surgery on Friday for the cancer. If not, they'll have to wait until she does have a negative test. So let's pray that that test is negative tomorrow and they're able to go ahead and do the surgery for the treatment on her cancer. So those are all updates on those that we prayed for last night. Tonight, uh, Tomorrow night, we'll uh, look at the more extensive list that we went through last night. I want to read a scripture, and this week we are reading scriptures that come from the last week of Jesus' life. Tonight, from the Gospel of John. It's really a pivotal point, a turning point in the Gospel of John, it comes in chapter 12, beginning with verse 20. I'm reading verse 20 through 33. It's the point in the Gospel of John where it becomes clear that it is time and Jesus is going to go to his death. John chapter 12, beginning with verse 20. Now there were some Greeks among those who went to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. 
Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for the judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. There are at least four things I'd like you to notice in this passage as Jesus is moving toward the crucifixion. First of all, you'll notice that some Greeks come. The passage begins with some Greeks who come looking for Jesus, and they tell Philip that they would like to see Jesus. Now, why didn't they go to Jesus directly? Probably Jesus was in the temple area. The temple was divided up into different courtyards. The outer courtyard was a courtyard where Greeks could go, Gentiles could go, but the inner court only Jews could go. So perhaps Jesus was in the inner court. These Greeks wouldn't be able to get there, but they found Philip out in the outer court and said, we would like to see Jesus. So now the world is turning to Jesus with these Greeks. Remember that way back in chapter 1 in the Gospel of John, in chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist said, The Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, as he pointed to Jesus. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. And remember in chapter 3, as, John talks to as Jesus talks to Nicodemus, John records, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And so Jesus comes for the world. And now as the Greeks, those from the world, want to see Jesus, the time has come. And then notice that Jesus says, my hour has come. As we go through the Gospel of John, over and over again, Jesus says, my hour has not come. Remember when his mother asked him to perform the wedding I performed the miracle at the wedding of Cana. At first he said, my hour has not come. He wanted to make it clear that he would go ahead and do this for his mother, but this was not the hour when he was going to identify himself as the Messiah. This was not the hour when he would finally go to the conclusion of his mission. But now his hour has come. And then notice that Jesus says, okay, what shall I say now? What shall I say? Shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? Jesus says, no, this is why I came. The kernel of wheat has to be buried in the ground before it bears fruit. Jesus knows what is going to happen. What John shows us here is that Jesus' death is not just an accident. It's not just that uh, they happen to turn on Jesus. Jesus knows what his actions will bring about. And he goes, even though it's troubling, he says, my heart is troubled. 
But he says, this is why I came. Jesus is resolute to carry out his mission as we move toward the cross. And then at the end of this passage, a very interesting turn. Jesus says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Now, this term lifted up had a double meaning. On the one hand, it meant to glorify, to exalt. And you'll notice we have that word glorify several times in this passage. Now's the time for Jesus to be glorified. But the term lifted up was also a technical term for crucifixion, that cruelest of deaths. And you notice that John says, he said this to show what kind of death he was going to die. So which is it here? Is Jesus being lifted up, his crucifixion? Or is Jesus being lifted up, his exaltation and glorification? And the answer, of course, is yes, it is both. The very act of Jesus being crucified is his glorification, his exaltation. This is why he has come. And his crucifixion is victory. And he says that when he's lifted up, he draws all people to himself. You see, it is that sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that has the power to draw us to him. If we don't resist, that picture of Jesus dying for us has the power to draw us to him. And I pray that as we move toward this weekend, when we think of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, that again, as Jesus is lifted up before us in our worship, that we will be drawn to him, and that we will receive strength, even though we're going through some difficult times, that we will receive strength and recognize the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Let's pray. Lord, tonight you have heard our requests. We are so grateful that Bill is doing well after this procedure with his eyes. And we're grateful that Miranda is headed home. We've been praying for that for quite a while. We want to pray for Sharon, Angela's mother, for Noni, a little Huxley, and also for the others that we have heard have tested positive for this coronavirus a relative of Dakota's, a relative of Chuck, relatives of, or friends of Patty. Lord, we are finding this to be a difficult time, but we know what you gave for us. And we pray that you will give us patience to be able to do what is necessary in our lives right now to help save the lives of others. And we pray that as we come to remembrance this weekend of all that Jesus did for us, that it will give us strength, and give us courage, and that we will be drawn to Jesus as he is lifted up. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Remember to tune in each evening, weekday evening, Monday through Friday at 7.30 when we have our family update. At 7 o'clock Friday night, you will want to tune in to sing hymns with Sophia. We'll have Sabbath school at 10 o'clock on Sabbath morning. I'll do a Sabbath school lesson and then at 11, I'll have a children's story and a sermon. So we hope you tune in for that. If you missed last week, you can catch it here on the Facebook page or on our webpage, edmundsadventist.org, or on our YouTube channel. And please do remember to continue to be generous as you have been 
with your tithes and offerings. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow night.